These are the five defenses to stream in week four. Number one on the list is the Miami Dolphins. Will Levis has been a dream matchup for any defense this year. He has five interceptions and three lost fumbles, giving him a league-leading eight turnovers. And while he has shown some flashes, he's still very much a work in progress. I know head coach Brian Callahan has come out and publicly supported a struggling quarterback, but I have to think that if the Titans fall to 0-4, they're going to be thinking about a quarterback change. And we may see Mason Rudolph sooner rather than later. But for the time being, however long Levis does have the starting job, I think any defense he faces is worth considering a stream. And while Miami's in a state of flux, especially on offense given all of their quarterback woes, they still have a lot of playmakers on this defense. Between Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Phillips, Calais Campbell, Javon Holland, Jordan Poyer, and potentially Kendall Fuller who's dealing with a concussion, they have a great opportunity to take advantage of a struggling quarterback this week. Number two on the list is the other team in this game, the Tennessee Titans. Skylar Thompson and the Dolphins made the Seahawks look like the Legion of Boom last week, giving up six sacks and only scoring three points. And I think the Titans have a good chance to produce similarly this week. Skylar Thompson was forced out of the game last week with a rib injury, and Tim Boyle took over. And he was equally as uninspiring, finishing the game with only 79 yards and no touchdowns. And if Boyle ends up getting the starting nod, that would be even more enticing. Through five winless starts, he's taken 10 sacks, lost four fumbles, and has a touchdown to interception ratio of 4 to 12. The Dolphins may also be without starting left tackle Teron Armstead, who left last week's game with a concussion. And if he can't get the green light, that would only help the Titans that much more. From what it sounds like, Skylar Thompson will not be able to go this week. So it's either going to be Tim Boyle or newly signed Tyler Huntley. Whatever the case, it's going to be a great matchup for Tennessee. The one thing I would mention is that it's probably reasonable to expect a much more run-oriented game script from Miami just to mitigate any turnovers from their quarterbacks. But at some point, if they fall behind too much, they're going to have to go to the air. The Titans are only rostered in 4% of leagues, and if you're looking for a plug-and-play start this week, they're definitely worth considering. Number three on the list is the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings go up against division rival Green Bay this week, and the Packers are doing it on both sides of the ball this year. They have a league leading nine takeaways and are leading the league in rushing with 612 yards. While impressive, I do have to mention that they've gone up against some pretty soft competition. In the last two weeks, they've gone up against the Colts and the Titans, who have two of the most turnover-prone quarterbacks in the NFL. The Vikings, on the other hand, have beaten some formidable opponents. They've beaten the Giants, the 49ers, and most recently the Texans, who they only allowed seven points to. And on the year, they've only allowed 30 points in total. So this will be Green Bay's first true test. The Vikings are leading the league in sacks with 16. They also have the second most interceptions with five, and they have the third most takeaways overall with six. They also have a block kick and a defensive score. Brian Flores seems to be dialed in, and this is a division matchup, so I think it's going to be a close game, and I expect Minnesota to come out strong. The Vikings are already rostered in 53% of leagues, but I think this number should go up as the year goes on, especially if they have another good performance this week. Number four on the list is the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams get the Bears in a struggling Caleb Williams this week, who's already thrown four interceptions and has one lost fumble giving him the third most turnovers in the league. While Williams has definitely made some questionable decisions, not everything falls on his shoulders. This team has not been able to protect him, they haven't had a running game, they're dealing with some injuries not having Keenan Allen, and frankly, the coaching needs to be questioned at this point. While it's fair to assume that Williams will continue to go through some growing pains and that the Rams aren't the most formidable opponent, giving up over 420 yards in each of the last two games, they are coming off of a huge comeback victory against the 49ers and should come into this game with a ton of confidence. They're only rostered in 1% of leagues, and while they do present a good amount of risk, they also do have a good amount of upside. So if you're looking to take a chance on a defense, they're definitely one to consider as well. Number five on the list is the Las Vegas Raiders. Last week did not go according to plan at all. They got embarrassed by Carolina, and head coach Antonio Pierce called out his squad. So I'm expecting them to come out with a lot more urgency. And they also have a pretty good matchup in the Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson has taken the most sacks this year with 16. And this is not an anomaly. In three of his six seasons as a starter, Watson has finished inside of the top five in terms of sacks taken. He also has two interceptions and two fumbles on the year. And the Browns have been playing musical chairs with their injured offensive line. 
And I expect that to be the case again this week. And hypothetically, if things got bad enough and Kevin Stefanski pulled the plug on Watson, then he would have to insert turnover-prone Jameis Winston, which would only help the Raiders' cause. The Raiders are rostered in 40% of leagues and are definitely a bit of a gamble. I'm not expecting many takeaways, but the hope is that they make up for it with sacks. Those are five defenses to stream in week four. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know which defenses you think we should stream in the comments below. Thank you.